Hello, hello, and good evening. Good evening, good evening. Welcome to the Working Wednesdays broadcast. I'm your host, Audra V. Hurd. I am the owner of IVG Publications. Y'all work with me. I don't know why every week I just get it twisted up. But uh, I am the owner of IBG Publications. We are a platform where we assist authors with publishing, coaching, and marketing their books. This is our weekly broadcast, the Working Wednesdays broadcast, where we bring on authors, we give exposure to their brand, as well as their products and business owners. So thank you for joining me tonight. It is August 19th, 2020, and I have an awesome guest who's going to be on tonight. I can say she's awesome, y'all, because I have personally worked with her and she is passionate about what she does. She's passionate about her vision and God has certainly put her on a mission. And we're going to talk about that mission tonight, y'all. So hold on to your seats. It's going to get real. It's going to get raw. It's going to get luscious. Okay. I say luscious because if you married, <laughs> you are in for a treat because she helps married women get their sex lives in order. Yes. You need to get your sex life in order. I ain't married yet. So I can say you. Uh, but anyway, uh, she's coming on tonight. I'm excited to have Coach Mavis McKnight with me. She's going to share a little bit about, a lot about, I'm going to say a little bit. She's going to share a lot about what she does and the people that she serves. So we are excited to have her on tonight. Do me a favor. Go ahead, like, share, tag the video, get someone on tonight. Somebody may need to hear this. Somebody might need to be coached. Somebody might need to get free through the word of God. So I just welcome you into the broadcast. Welcome in, welcome in. Like I said, like, share, tag the video. You can visit us at ibgpublications.com. There you can go and find out more about what we do, who we service, and how we operate. Uh, we've got some great stuff that's coming down the pipeline. We will be soon offering uh, some signature coaching programs. We've got three programs we will be rolling out soon, very shortly. I am excited about those programs because it's going to take everything we've done as IBG over the years, and it's going to help you gain even more clarity about writing your book, finishing your book, publishing your book, what's the best options to publish? Some people don't even know. They just go seeking general knowledge. But when you take our coaching program, we actually tell you the best route to take when it comes to publishing and even marketing your book. Um, I did an interview earlier today and I talked about the fact that authors, when they put their book out, they don't know how to market. So I'm very huge on showing people simple strategies, simple tactics, simple things to market, get the word out about your book. So we'll be rolling that out on our website very soon. I'm still putting it together and I kind of want to make sure it's packaged right before we put it out there. So just be tuned, stay tuned. Um, if you need your book published or you want to be rebranded, I'm going to ask Coach Mavis to talk a little bit about how we helped her rebrand. But if you want to rebrand yourself as an author or your book and redo it, we do all of that too, y'all. We got you covered on every end, right? So like I said, go ahead and like, share the video. We're going to go ahead and introduce my guest tonight. We're not going to prolong the time because we want to make sure we get enough time to share what she has to share with us tonight. So I'm going to go ahead and introduce my guest, none other than certified coach, certified sex coach, Mavis McKnight, MS. Mavis McKnight is a candid, caring, and passionate certified sex coach and marriage advocate. She is on a mission to educate, empower, and inspire Christian wives to enrich their sexual relationship. She encourages women to embrace their sexuality, learn to be creative, and bring more fun and excitement to their intimate lives. Her goal is to teach women to add flavor and spice to their sex life, blend sex positive messages with actions, and create tantalizing sexual experiences that burst with sweetness. <laughs> Those are her words. Some of the areas she coaches are little or no interest in sex, problems getting or holding an erection, mm. problems ejaculating too soon. I don't know if I should be saying all this, but she got it all. <laughs> 
<laughs> she got it all on here. Should I be saying all this, Coach Mavis? Give me a nod. Should I be saying all this? Or <laughs> should I be skipping around? Because I really want her to uh, elaborate on that. I don't want to get into that. So let me let me take it on down a little notch. Um, but she has conducted numerous workshops, seminars, marriage classes, and Bible studies for over 11 years. So she is very experienced at what she does. Uh, provided counseling and coaching in marriage and relationships for over 10 years. She earned a bachelor's degree in psychology, a master's degree in human services. She is a certified sex coach and clinical sex sexologist, a certified life coach, published author, and CEO of Intimate Connections. When Mavis is not bubbling over with passion to teach about sex, she enjoys dancing, traveling, reading, laughing, music, spending time with her handsome, adorable, and loving husband and her family, and also having her grandkids over for a sleepover. She says sometimes, y'all, not all the time, but sometimes. So I'm going to go ahead and get my guests on into the stream with us tonight. Hey, Coach Davis, how hey. are you? Hey, Miss Audrey, I am wonderful. Thank you. Good, good, good. Oh, my I, I got to read your bio and I was like, oh, let me let her elaborate on this. <laughs> <laughs> this is her expertise. So let me just, you know, bring it on in because I don't want to go out there and then whatever I say, it may get addressed, it may not. So I'm going to let you handle all that. But go ahead, take a moment and introduce introduce yourself to our audience tonight and say hello, however you want to greet the audience. Well, hello, everybody. And first, Ms. Ardra, uh, thank you for having me on your show. I'm very, very honored to be <laughs> sitting with you tonight and sharing with you and with your audience. Um, yeah, I, that that bio was pretty uh, complete, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm listening to the bio and I'm like, wow, ooh, all that. Okay, we don't have time to do all that. But yeah, all of that is is definitely um, who I am and what I do and who I serve. And just the things that you had started reading, um, that's on my bio because I also work with couples. So, you know, the husbands sometimes have issues, just mm -hmm. like the wives have issues. So I had to include some issues that are con concerns that some of the husbands deal with. And uh, that's what that part was about. Oh, okay. So. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And that's yeah. why I wanted to explain it. And I didn't want to just go rattling off and the people are like, what are you talking about? And they don't have a full backdrop on you. So right, right. I wanted to let you explain this. So let's jump right on in. Um, I know you're a first lady, first yeah. and foremost, and you yeah. lead women. You've been leading women for years. So uh, before we get right into the meat of your books, talk about uh, your journey as a first lady, as a leader. Um, talk a little bit about, even if you want to talk about when you got saved, when you met the Lord, you know, your transition into uh, Christianity. Talk about who you are in some of your journey. Okay. Um, my journey is a little different. My father was a pastor, so he'd been a pastor my whole life. Hmm. So of course I've been in church my whole life. And yeah. what I found was that being in church your whole life does not make a person saved. Hmm. Um, you do Say that. Again. <laughs> yeah. You know, cause I'm, I mean, there's a lot of people that sit in church that really don't, you know, they don't have a relationship with God. And I didn't learn that until way later until I was an adult that I needed a relationship with God, my own personal relationship, yes. even though my father was preaching on that all the time, mm -hmm. you know, because we were born into that, it's yeah. a little different. You kind of don't pay attention to it or you kind of take it for granted. Right. Um, the, the information that, you know, my father was, was sharing. Um, so I went on a, a lot of years, a whole lot of years, just being in church and you know we i was a musician me and my sister my brother and my nephew we played the music for the choir okay. and, and for, for years and years and years and you know once um my me and my hubby got married that was in 2006. so okay. and, and of course he was already a pastor so when, when god put us together i was like god you got jokes like seriously uh <laughs> what are you really doing here? You know, yeah, I think yeah. my mother was the first lady, but you know, I 
just on the outside looking in, I don't really have any inside information on what was going on with her. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I was just kind of thrown into this whole first lady role. Um, didn't really know what to do with it. Mm -hmm. And the, and, and the, the craziest thing, well, well, first of all, um, before we got married, I asked God to give me what I needed to, you know, be able to support my husband in this ministry. And one of the things that God told me was do not let, don't conform to people's expectations of who you should be as a first lady. Mm. So once he said that, it was like that gave me the freedom to just be me. Yeah. And so when we got married, um, that was in 2006, believe it or not, I did not uh, surrender my life and will to God and really accept Christ until February of 2012. Wow. So, yeah. Wow. So, um, I'm, yeah, I'm all in this position, you know. Yeah, yeah. For, huh? I say, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like not knowing what to do, and I'm like in the same boat that everybody else is in, you know, not saved, but just right. being church or whatever. So it's some things that I, I couldn't answer for them. I couldn't answer questions. So, you know, it was just kind of a trip. That's why I was saying God had jokes, because I'm like, how are you going to put me in this position? And I'm, I ain't even like really saved or nothing right now. But, uh, but you knew <laughs> that, though. I'm glad you could say you knew that, because some yeah. people don't be real about that. So, right. yeah. Wow. Yeah, I'm telling you. And I was just like, oh, my God. OK, God. So, you know, in, in February of 2012, that was when I surrendered my life to God. And it, uh, from that point on, of course, it's just been a total adventure. Yeah. So, so uh, you know, I've been loving my life, loving my relationship with God, loving the, the direction that he's he's you know, taking me. And then even the women that I, I serve in our church, I, you know, I've been having a lot of good success with that, you know, even though it was like the first time thing, but been having a lot of good success with the, you know, the people that God has, has put under us, you know, for us to minister or pastor. So that's, that's my journey into how I, I became a first lady. Now my journey into um, sex coaching um, was, was like, a piggybacking off of that, I was just like, okay, God, I don't know what to do with these women. What am I, what do I do? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so just one day I just had to surrender mm. to, to the spirit of God and I'm driving down Crenshaw and he's like, turn right here. So I turn right, drive a little more, turn left here. I turn left, <laughs> drive a little more, <laughs> pull over right here. And when I pull over, I look up and find myself sitting in front of the Word of Life bookstore. Wow. And I'm like, okay, why am I here? So, you know, being obedient, I got out. And I'm just looking for books on prayer for women, mm -hmm. um, counseling for women, because I really don't know why I'm there. So yeah. then I, 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 I grab a few books, not really connecting with any of them. Mm -hmm. And I get ready to go to the counter and pay for them. And then something just compels me to look to my left. And there's a shelf right there right um catapulted to the cash register and there is this one book all by itself and it was the title of it was um 21 questions christian women ask about sex hmm. and i'm like hmm, okay so of course i'm compelled to open the book up and start right. looking through it reading it and everything so i read a little bit of it and it was like totally totally interesting so um, so then I said, okay, I felt totally compelled to buy that book. So I just put the other ones back and I just got that one book and I just read that book like quickly. It was like three days and I was almost done with that book. Yeah. And, and then as I'm walking back to my office from lunch, the Lord just spoke to my spirit and said, this is what I want you to do. I want you to teach married Christian women how to enjoy sex with their husbands is what I created you to do. Hmm. So I was just like, okay. <laughs> so that's how my journey got started with the sex coaching and, and the marriage and intimacy and teaching the women how to get spicy and how to wow. have more fun in their sex life. Wow. You know, it's interesting that, uh, you know, you said you weren't really safe, but yet you found yourself in this position. I'm just kind of curious to know, you know, you can answer or yes or no, or I don't want to answer whatever, but did your husband really know that, you know, you were not really prepared for a position like that? Or did he consider that? Or he just was like, you're my wife. This is it. <laughs> kind of thing. It, it, it was kind of like, you're my wife. This is it. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
you know, it was a move of God. So whenever it's a move of God, he does not question it. Neither do I, you know, yeah. just don't question it. And it's like, okay, this is what he set up, even though, you know, I said he, he had jokes, but yeah. this is what he set up for us. And I um, mean, we, we can only go with what, you know, he's where he's telling us to go. So that we just had to go with it because it was God. Wow. Wow. And I'm just grateful that, you know, the thing is, is that when God is uh, igniting change in our life, uh, he puts us in a position where we're hungering for more of him. Yeah. Exactly. And you said, I have been going to church, but I didn't have a personal relationship. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people miss that about church is that mm -hmm. outside of church, what are you doing? You know, mm -hmm. are, you, are you really praying? Are you spending time with God? Are you getting to know him? What kind of relationship do you have with God? And so it sounds like that hunger is what, you know, puts you in a position to say, I'm really not saved. Let me get this together. <laughs> you know, I'm now leading other women because now yes. you're leading other women. So you got to really truly be that example, you know. Mm -hmm. So I applaud you for, you know, that, uh, that self-awakening. You know, because a lot of people just be in that position, faking it till they make it. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They, they, yes. they don't never make it. Let's yeah, keep exactly. It. <laughs> <That's so true. laughs> you yes. fake it till you make it and never make it. So, Absolutely. you know, I applaud you for really, truly getting saved and really, truly giving your life to God and knowing the difference, you know. Yeah. So Thank let's you. let's let's keep on journeying on. So we know you became a published author, and it, it's clear that God spoke to you, told you this was your purpose. You know, this is why He created you. You know, and so talk a little bit about that transition, because being a first lady and you know getting up talking about sex, that's just like okay, what, you know, what's, what's really going on? <laughs> right, right, because being in, in church my whole life, of course, I never heard that ever, ever, ever. So, and I know a whole lot of other people hadn't heard it either, heard yeah. of it either. But uh, truthfully, I have always had this connection with my sexuality. Mm. So it was really not even a transition and the fact that God told me to to not conform to people's expectations of yeah. who I should be as a first lady, I it was easy for me to step right into into this calling, like oh super easy. Yeah. And, and yeah, and and I recently realized that um, the reason why I have my I'm so open with my sexuality is because my mother's my mother's mindset and attitude about it. Mm. And it's not that she taught us anything about it, but it's just my little process and my, my little experience that I had with finding some stuff under her mattress and <laughs> looking for something else. <laughs> and, okay. then, and then the way that registered to me, gotcha. it, it registered to me in a positive way. So I never had this issue with with sex or sexuality it's just always been something that you know i've been good with and, and as i'm even sharing with you that to me is part of the reason why god called me to do this what he called me to do or, or he yeah. orchestrated that whole thing you know so it would be easy for me to step into that um position and be able to share with women about you know this gift that god the gift of, of sex that god has given us Yes, yes. And I like that you call it a gift mm -hmm. uh, because some people don't think it's a gift. And they feel like it's a chore. Um, it's a blessing to yes. be able to enjoy your husband or your wife, you know, mm -hmm. in that particular manner. So mm -hmm. talk about the transition from, um, you know, now I'm a first lady to, you know, God has told me that this is my purpose and writing your first book. You know, what kind of response did you get from people? Because even though we live in this age now, you know, in the realm of, okay, so you probably got started, what, about five, six years ago with this? Or how, how long ago? 10, 10 years. This is, this is my 10-year anniversary this year. It was March of 2010. Okay. And, you know, I was supposed to have a celebration, but of course, you know, that virus stuff yeah. just knocked yeah. that all out. But anyway, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 10 years, 10 years. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So 10 years. Talk about the transition. You know, have people become more comfortable now, 
you know, talking about their sex life? Do you still face the same barriers? You know, do people, are they more open? You know, talk about that transition, especially when you first started talking about it, because it's really kind of like, although we know in the church, let's talk about the church now. Right. We know in the church that people who are married are having sex. We know that. Mm-hmm. But it's not an open conversation. Not at all. It's not open. Not so talk all. about, you know, starting that conversation and, you know, were people comfortable? What kind of barriers did you deal with? Well, actually, and this is another amazing thing, which is why I know it was this God is all in it, is when I first started talking about it, I was able to share with my, my members and God had told me to start a Bible study. And I mean, I have been, I have been um, sharing with other women. I'll put it that way. I started sharing with with our members and other and some other women, some other friends and, and acquaintances that I had that I had known. And the reception, the way they received it, was not surprising, but it was kind of eye opening okay. because one one of the things that I have found out. And I'm gonna say about women, the men too, but about women mainly because that's who I mainly work with. People are closed mouth about mouth about uh, sex and things that have to do with sex, but once you get them started on that conversation, the mm-hmm. floodgates open. Okay. Up. Okay. And that's what I've learned. That yeah, it it people might be resistant in the beginning, okay. but one gift that God has given me is to make people feel safe. To share in my presence yeah. and that has just been ever since i could remember okay. and and so once you know people get that feeling that okay it's, it's okay to talk to her hmm. then they just really let it all out so the reception i, I didn't get a lot of pushback at all okay. not not in my face now i don't know what people say behind my back but <laughs> not in my face okay but, and this was um like the the majority of the time and I went to this one conference. Mm-hmm. And this was the second year that I went to the conference. The first year that I went to the conference, which shall be named nameless, um, <laughs> <laughs> I was talking about it. Everybody was all into it. And it was just amazing how everybody opened up and shared, because I opened up with a question mm-hmm. and I said, what is the nastiest place you and your husband have had sex? Mm. And I promise you, every woman in that room had a story. Mm. Okay. I'm still probably like five women in there, mm. and that that was so refreshing to me. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie. So there, at the end of it, there was some, you know, a little bit of um, resistance that came out at the very end. So you know, I just kind of just ignored that because I, I don't really. I didn't really know what that was about <laughs> because okay. this person shared also their story. But anyway, I went to the same conference a year later hmm. and there were a different group of women, but some of the ladies that were there the first time was, was there again. Mm-hmm. And I started sharing and I mentioned this one aspect of the sexual experience and you talk about pushback mm. and resistance. Okay. One lady just, she just, kind of like dove into me just like talking yeah just talking mess i'm gonna say wow and yeah so and it it was at her house so you know she felt that i was violating her house by talking about that so i said okay you know i'm not offended i we cannot not even talk about that anymore but i think once she started she couldn't stop (laughs) talking about it (laughs) and you know that that um that saying, those that protest too loudly, yeah, those are the ones mm, you might get on the side eye, right? Yeah. So it was kind of like too much passion and resistance behind it to where I know, you know, it, it was something that they really wanted to deal with and work with. So when she started talking about it, then it's, I mean, talking uh, negative about it, then it was probably like four or five other women that kind of jumped on her bandwagon. Mm. And yeah, so and then the you know the other half of the room they were like with what I was saying and appreciative. Yeah. So you know I just my thing was God God helped me to handle that situation to where I didn't get mad, I didn't get offended, I didn't start talking crazy, I didn't throw my papers down and just rock, walk off the room. Right. I remember right. that right. He gave me every word I needed to say to respond to everything. 
that each one of those women said. And that's, uh, and that's another reason why I know this is a call from God. Wow. So that so far was the only resistance that I've encountered to this. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Wow. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing that we learn where we are when we get in the midst of yes. those kind of, you know, circumstances mm -hmm. you know? So it's good that you handled it like you did and you know if someone's offended sometimes we have to you know just pull back yeah pull back pull, yeah. pull it back yeah. reel it in so yeah. yeah so let's go ahead and welcome our audience i see venus is with us tonight hey coach venus <laughs> good evening thanks for joining um, I see Alice Ann Crump is on. God bless you, woman of God. Thanks for joining. And Sister Jackie Johnson. So thank you, ladies. Thank you, thank you, thank you for those that are with us tonight. Please do me a favor, like, share, tag the video so we can get some people on who need to hear this candid conversation. Yes. So let's go ahead and transition into you becoming an author. Okay. So you were doing your workshops, you were doing your seminars, you know, ministering to women. How did you transition and feel like, okay, now it's time to write a book? How did you make that transition? Well, th this is all about not listening, us being kind of like God tells us to do something and then we kind of want to do something else. Yeah. So, <laughs> so the book that he led me to originally that mm -hmm. got me started on this journey when I read the, um, the interview with the authors, the thought came to me to ask God, okay, so do I write first? And he mm -hmm. said, yeah, but I didn't. Oh, I, I started doing the workshops <laughs> and all that other stuff because that's what I love doing. Yeah. So I started doing all that and they were not like working out. Like mm -hmm. I thought they should have, should have worked out. Okay. So I wasn't getting enough people involved or interested and it just didn't just kind of fizzled. Mm. So I said, okay, then my, you know, my mind goes to all these other ideas that come to you, you know, when you, you try not to do what you're supposed to do. So yeah. these other ideas, you know, I get focused on all that other stuff and none of that stuff was working. So of course I find myself back in that place. Oh, they said, what do you want me to do, God? What do you want, you know, and they already told me right. <laughs> what he wanted me to do. So, right. Yeah, so um, that's when he told me to start the Bible study. So once I started listening to God and then just following the path that he put me on, the idea to actually write it, uh, the timing, I should say. Yeah. The right time to actually write the book came in, I believe it was 2014. Mm. 2014 or it had to be 2015, 2016, I'm sorry. 2016. That's when the time, everything op opened up and it was time for me to write. Um, so, and it was just, I had known all along that I was supposed to write and I write down a lot of stuff, a journal, I write down programs, I, I write a lot. So once it was time for me to just start to transition into to writing, I had a whole lot of stuff already mm -hmm. written down. Wow. So, so it was almost like just, you know, transfer the stuff over here. Okay. And, you know, tweak it a little bit or whatever, look, which is what I thought, mm -hmm. tweak it a little bit. And then, you know, you got a book. But of course, that's not how it works. <laughs> <laughs> that's not how it worked for me. That's not how it worked for me. Yeah. So um, I, once I decided I was going to write, I reached out to my mentor, um, Lorraine Pentis, who she is a pioneer in this industry. And she had a writing retreat that she offered. So in Colorado, and I went down there for three days and I knew I was ready. I, I was serious about it when I paid my money to yeah. go to Colorado and yeah. participate with this writing retreat. So the, the experience that I had down there, it wasn't even really about writing. It was really about me and God. So whatever, it was some stuff that I guess had to get out of me and some transitions I had to, had to make. And once I got done with that writing retreat and came home, then I started writing. Now, and that's how I trans transitioned into the actual writing of the book. So when I was down there, I just gave her an idea of what I wanted to write about, which was the um, secrets of a good wife. And she just helped me a little bit um, with some concepts with that. And then of course, once I got home, I was on my own pretty much. Yeah. So yeah, yeah so that's how I transitioned. Wow. 
well. So talk a little bit about some of the things you share in the book and then also transition into the journal because I know that those two kind of accompany each other. Yes. So let's talk about, don't give the whole book away because okay. I, you know, <laughs> I won't. But share some of those PowerPoints from the book to just kind of wet our whistle, what we're going to get. Well, from the book Secrets of a Good Wife, Sex Truths and Other Marriage Essentials, and God gave me that second part of that title, which was, and I was so sure about that. Um, I talk about some, some of the things in the book is, uh, I talk about the starting point for every good wife and where she needs to be and what she needs to do. I talk about um, serving each other. Um, I talk about how to learn, how to talk, um, how to speak man speak hmm. so women can, can uh, communicate better okay. and learn how to be the best wife they can be. Um, I talk about uh, that your man be the leader, which we have ooh, us independent, strong, opinionated women. Mm. We got a little bit of an issue with that one. Letting us yeah. <laughs> <Justin laughs> <Peter. laughs> yeah. We think we know everything, of course. Right, right. We know a lot, yes. Yeah. But, we don't know everything. No, we don't. And I, and I to touch on that because it's important for us to understand that there are two people in this relationship, and both people uh, in this marriage, and both people um, bring something valuable to to the marriage. And right. I talk about being a, a fun, sexy, classy lady. I uh, talk about unrealistic expectations, which is a huge problem with yeah. just life. Period. Right. And then I just then I talk about how women can get their sexual needs met. Mm. That's just a few things that, that are in. OK. Mm -hmm. OK. Now talk about the miseducation of the church girl. How does it help with the book? Well, the way it it companions is. When I when I introduced the sex concept in secrets, it was basically a, a soft introduction just to bring people awareness to the forefront about God's view and his perspective of sex to marriage. Yeah. And it's of course a gift that he gave and that we should all be in, enjoying it. But because women have so many hangups mm -hmm. and so many issues about yeah. sex, because a lot of stuff that was taught yeah. um, in the church and yeah. in the family, um, they suffer, have been suffering in silence for, for centuries. Yeah. Um, now I do know women are more empowered today, but not in that area. It's still, still a, a lot of, um, it's still affected in that area. Yeah. So the journal, um, the miseducation of the church girl, the main issue is basically not being taught the truth. Mm. So if you're not taught the truth, then you cannot function right. And you cannot benefit from something, whatever the thing might be. Yeah. So not being the, the truth, not being taught in religious organizations and, you know, from our half the history, um, a lot of people are just taking whatever was taught and just struggling through their sexual relationship just with that information. So the whole point of my journal is to 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 expose women to the truth of of what God says about sex in marriage yeah. and to, to show them how, where everything went wrong, where all these views, negative views and all this negative stuff they were taught, where that came from. And then to help them to, to shift their mindset because that's like the foundation of right. everything. That's right. Shift your mindset, yeah. And then be able to change whatever those negative thoughts are into whatever the opposite is. Yeah. So, you know, how we taught sex was dirty, sex was a chore right. and all that. Right. Just turn it on on its opposite. It's yeah. sex, juicy and delicious, and it's <laughs> God, and, yes. and, I, and I enjoy it. me and my husband. You know, we are we are um, just totally enjoying giving giving to each other and totally engaging in in this sexual experience with each other. And it's all about the enjoyment and the and the potential for pleasure. Yes. So, and that's a, a gift from God. So the journal is all focusing on the women and helping them to get to a place where they can learn to enjoy it without any embarrassment, without any guilt, and without any shame. 
Wow. Wow. This is really good stuff, y'all. Like, share, tag the video. She's drawing us into this intense conversation about <laughs> pleasurable sex with your husband and your wife. Um, you know, a married couple uh, that you don't know if they're struggling because they ain't your business, but <laughs> share the video so whoever needs to see it can see it. So you got some good stuff. You know, you share it with the book. When somebody gets the book in, in their hands, what's your hope for, you know, that woman that gets that book in their hands? Well, my hope is for that woman to be transformed, for her relationship with sex to be transformed and for her to become whoever she is supposed to be as a sexual being. Mm. And, and, and that will lead, of course, into the next step of her pleasure and then the next step of her pleasure and then the next step of her pleasure. So that that's what I really would hope for women, for them to go through the journal each each step in the journal because one step one um, section builds off of, of the other one and to really engage in it so they can transform their relationship with sex wow that's good stuff uh so talk about you know writing the book both books and how it has impacted you because you kind of expose parts of yourself mm -hmm. you know in the book so talk about how that has impacted you you know well you know how we hide a yeah. lot yeah yeah part of my journey and my self-discovery was about not hiding anymore mm. and really speaking my truth mm -hmm. and i know doing that it's it's going to help a lot of women to see that hey well i'm not the only one that you know has been dealing with this or that has been through this or has done that yeah. so so that that is mostly how it's impacted me because it's it's really me and it's really the stuff that's coming from inside of me and it's about the taking off the the mask or mm -hmm. come out from hiding or the closet or the covers whatever yeah. you know people say yeah. and to just be, really be truthful about who we are as women, who we are as people, who we are as sexual beings. Yeah. So, and then of course, the more you teach, the more you learn. So when you, you know, when I have to do research on this stuff, when I have to study my information, I learned it. It, it helps me right. even in my personal life and in my um, sexual relationship. Mm -hmm. So that's how the books have, have impacted me. Wow. So what excites you most, you know, about the people that you serve, what you do for them? What's like that driving force or that passion that keeps you going with what you do? Because I just love teaching people about sex. <laughs> <laughs> in, I, a I, nutshell. <laughs> in a nutshell, I want everybody to experience, OK, all the gifts that God has for right. people. And especially this one, because it's so it's so different from every other gift and it's so intimate and the, the potential for the pleasure. I mean, I want every woman to experience that yeah. because it, you know, and it, it, it there are some some things that even the whole sexual experience, um, some positive things that happen. I mean, you know, you, you, your heart rate goes down, your skin is all get to all pretty you know you, yeah. you, know, you get more tolerable tolerable with people and yeah <laughs> that's true <laughs> so, wow. I, I said if more women was getting good sex we wouldn't be having so many scowling women walking around here and so many women with so many attitudes <laughs> i promise you that's my belief ah <laughs> uh, you know what i'm laughing because i've heard people say she just need to get laid you ever hear people say that you just need to get laid yeah. and <laughs> right, right, yeah. exactly, exactly. But it's, but it's so true. Yeah, you don't even really, really realize it. But yeah. that is really true because it it does have a relaxing, calming effect. Yeah. When, you know, when you're receiving your pleasure correctly. So yes, 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 I agree. So talk about some of the other things you offer. We talked about your books, but I know you offer coaching mm -hmm. and workshops and things like that. So kind of talk to the person who's like, okay, I hear what she's saying. 
you know, I want to, you know, do something different, you know, because they want to get some clear skin or they want to get you know, <laughs> that pleasure on. But they might be like sitting on the fence. So talk about what you do as a certified sex coach. Talk about that. Well, I, one of the things that I I do is I offer one on one coaching when people want to go deeper than just, you know, the group thing. Um, just one-on-one -on -one coaching. I do have programs that are four, four weeks plus, you know, that I, that I offer to people. Yeah. I, I coach um, couples also uh, because there are a lot of concerns between couples and, you know, communication is definitely one of them. So um, I, I also coach couples. I do, I do, we do group programs. Uh, we are a part of a, a, a group, a couple's monthly couples marriage and sex talk right now uh, with the ABCs of ministry, ABCs of marriage ministry. And it's uh, every third Thursday of the month. So we talk to, you know, couples in a, in a discussion, in a group discussion about just general issues and uh, whatever is important to them to talk about. Um, I, and I, of course I'll do workshops. I have, you know, one of my workshops that went along with my journal um, that I also do to help women learn how to um, boost their sexual self-confidence because that's, you know, one of the main issues with us women, you know, we're shy, we, yeah. we weren't taught to, to just speak directly about our needs. Yeah. And then that's, that's another um, part of the program to learn, I teach women how to speak to find their voice and speak directly about their needs, their sexual needs, wants and desires to their husbands. So those are some of the things, some of the things that, that I do. Um, I also offer a, a monthly check-in, so check-in and chat. You know, the, the person can talk about whatever they want to talk about because I am a certified life coach too. So right. they can talk about anything under the sun if they have a sex issue of concern, they can talk about that. If they have a, a, a life issue, they can talk about that. Um, but a lot of times when people do contact me, it'll start off with a life issue, but then they'll start talking about, you know, a sex concern. And the thing that I've learned also is that most sex concerns are not about sex at all. They're about life issues. Mm -hmm. So that's why those two go together really well. So those are, those are just a few of the things that, that I offer, you know, with my coaching. Yeah. And I was going to ask, you know, do you find that problems in the bedroom, you know, come from other areas of life, you know, and it just kind of trickles over mm -hmm. you know, to the bedroom? That's what it kind of sounds like. Talk, mm -hmm. uh, talk a little bit about also how health issues, you know, affect people's sex life. Talk a little bit about that. Ooh, Lord Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> OK, now. I the aging is the first thing I'm going to talk about because I know we have other other issues, but the aging is it can be a real a real booger, I'll say, mm -hmm. um, because as we age, you know, stuff stopped functioning the way it used to function when we was 20, 30, right. 40. Right. Right. So we just have to with, with health issues, we just have to to redefine what sex means to us. Mm -hmm. what our sexual experience means to us and just expand our definition and don't don't um, confine it to just penis and vagina sex because mm. that, yeah, when you're 20, okay, yeah, you could do that. But when you're 50 and 60, that might not be happening for you. Yeah. So um, that's that's one of the main things with the health issues or with the, with the aging. With health issues, um, specific health issues, medication that people take can sometimes um, decrease their sexual desire so that's a, a huge problem with medical issues the medication yep. and the effects so one of the things that people can do as far as that's concerned is to, to um, contact your doctor and to find out if there's another dose or lower dose that you can take that might not you know affect your desire so much yeah. um with you know, with, with the medication um and even positions when you're, you know, you have medical conditions, you might have, you know, your back issues, people might have uh, other limb issues, you know, then you that, that's when you have to get together with each other, get on the internet if you need to, and right. find some different positions that, right. you know, might work for you. 
yeah. you know, or if you have back issues, same thing. Just find some different positions that'll work for you because everything doesn't work for everybody. So right. that could be like a, a little intimate um, thing that the, the couple can do together. So, and, and then that'll show a real, real care and concern you know, with uh, about each other, which is really important when you start aging and when you start right. getting medical conditions, you know, you, you start feeling some kind of way because like, oh my God, I can't do this no more, do that no more. So you're just thinking that, you know, you, you're the other person, you're depriving the other person or you're feeling insecure or whatever the case might be. So that's really important, you know, for couples to stay connected and do intimate, intimate things like that. Do you find it hard for couples to talk about it? Is it is that something that is a struggle when you see couples? Are they not able to talk about it? You know about the health issues or just about um, just sex, sex just sex period. What this person like? What the other person don't like? What turns them on? You know those kind of conversations. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, that's probably the <laughs> number one thing being able to talk about it. But what I've learned, of course, is that men don't have that much of a problem. Oh, okay. Asking okay. for what they want. Oh, okay. It's, it's mostly the women and it's it's historical. It's okay. historical. Because, okay. you know, we, we didn't have a voice for a long time. Right. Women didn't. So, you know, <clears throat> that kind of stuff really does uh, get ingrained in you generation mm. after generation and you don't really realize it until you come to a point where it affects you personally. Yeah. So, yeah, so, so yeah, that that's a, a big, big issue and a lot of it is, is just embarrassment yeah. because because of the the mindset that's out there about the whole sexual experience yeah if, if yeah. we teach more po sex positive um mindsets information that yeah. you know talk the good parts about it instead of just telling everybody don't do it don't do it don't do it right. and you know you'll get pregnant or you know, whatever catch right. disease or whatever it right. is <laughs> then people would have something else to look forward to and to work toward. Well, that, that's a good point because, you know, a lot of what people bring into the bedroom is what they were taught or told yeah. about it, you yeah. know? And, and, you know, if you were told, like you said, uh, don't do it because you're going to get a disease or you're going to get pregnant, it could cause a person to clam up. Yeah. You know, for whatever the reason, because menta mentally, that's what they were fed mentally. Right. You know, so I can definitely see that, you know, as being an issue. Wow. So yeah. talk about we've talked about how you've evolved from when you started till now. How do you see yourself evolving in the next, let's say, five years or so? Ooh, let me see the next five years. Um, whew. <laughs> I'm trying to get this one year down first. <laughs> <laughs> I know this has been a year this year. Wow. Yes. I, I I see um, myself training other people um, under the ministry to be able to to expand the ministry and expand the vision and expand the message. So that that's one of the the things that you know even now we we have been talking about. Um, and we have some people that we're going to be working with that, uh, working on that with, because I believe that this message is so important that it needs to get out to as many people as possible. So whatever way we can do that, just expand yeah. the message, you know, share it, um, just just the message and the vision and the ministry, then that's what um, I'm looking to work toward. And if it's, you know, me speaking to, you know, big audiences, if it's me doing Zoom calls, if it's me being interviewed and or, you know, the people that are going to be trained by me, if it's them, you know, put getting a group together and sharing, whatever it is, it's just that's what, you know, we're going to be willing to do. So um, that, that's, that's pretty much what I see. Wow. Uh, let's go ahead and bring our audience in. I see a couple comments rolling through the uh, questions. <laughs> uh, Tam says, it's learned conditions. Don't talk about it. Make it until you make it. I don't know what, Wait. <laughs> I don't know what she meant that for. <laughs> oh, I know. I know exactly uh, what she's saying. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Um, yeah. And then she also said, right, it's taboo at times. And I mm -hmm. think she was talking about, you know, when we talk about having the conversation, 
you know, that it is taboo at times. So we are getting up on the hour. It went by so fast, but we are getting <laughs> up on the hour. We like to be like right at an hour. So if anybody has any questions, um, any other comments or feedback, go ahead and put them in the chat box. I got a couple different uh, devices going. So go ahead and put it in the chat box. We will definitely address your questions if you have any. Um, we got one more question, and then we're going to let Coach Mavis talk about where you can find her books and her sex coaching at. So uh, we're going to leave our audience with your legacy. So okay. what do you desire to be the legacy that you are putting in the earth or leaving in the earth? Oh, pleasure. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, my legacy is going to be just pleasure, se sexual pleasure, pleasure potential. Um, I, I want my legacy to be truth, to learn what's, what's real and what's not. Mm. Um, I wanted to, to be something that, that helps to keep marriages together and families together. Yes. So we can, you know, continue to create that strong family, strong community, strong church, strong world concept. Yeah. So those, those are pretty much the things that I, I want to leave as a legacy and, and, and self love. Yes. That is so my soapbox. Yes. <laughs> yes. That, I don't have none of this. So yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Self love. That's, that's definitely one of the things that I would want love for people to, to know me for is that I promoted that self love. I promoted pleasure. I promoted truth and yes. I promoted hope. Awesome. Awesome legacies. You know, truth on any form, in any form is good, but yes. especially in what you're saying, because we know that society has painted us a picture of mm -hmm. what sex, our sex life should look like. And so, you know, you coming with truth, it helps to invite people into a different realm where they can be comfortable right. you know, sharing their sex life and being the sexual being you know, that you talk about. So this is really good stuff. I hate for us to close it up on the hour. We could probably go for another whole hour on that and, and, and take this in a whole different direction. But yeah. tell everybody uh, where they can find your books, um, you know, find you on the web, get the sex coaching set up. Tell everybody where they can find you at. All right. Well, you can visit my website. Uh, my website is www.mavismcknight.com. Mm -hmm. And you can also email me at askmavis at mavismcknight.com if you have any questions or if you um, want to set up an appointment with me. Um, my Both of my books are now available on Amazon. So awesome. the Secrets of a Good Wife, Sex Truths and Other Marriage Essentials. And you see all my uh, tabs in there, right? <laughs> my study <Yes>. tab. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, my recent journal oh there we go miseducation of the church girl um revealing truths about sex sexuality thank you so much and self-love and by the way uh miss audria is the one who did this amazing cover <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you thank you for that plug <laughs> All right. oh my god it's just so beautiful beautifully designed on the inside and i know you can't see it right there but once you get it you will be like oh my god this is amazing yeah. so yes yeah. so amazon both books are available and uh, also on my website, if you go through my website, then um, you will receive a uh, an autographed copy. But you can also go directly through Amazon. Okay, I'm putting it in a comment box so we can put it up on the screen. Okay. And I wish I would have sent you my link, um, Amazon links, but, but that's okay. They can go right on there and type it in. All right. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and put up the uh, the second comment I'm going to put up because it has either available on Amazon.com or her personal website. Um, that is MavisMcKnight.com. Y'all go check her out. And they can schedule their coaching on your website, your yes. coaching on, the, on your website too, right? Yes, on my contact page. Yes, okay. absolutely. Awesome, awesome. So go get signed up. Do you have any specials or anything you're doing, uh, you know, special at this time? Well, I do have a companion special 
that way you can get both um, the book and the journal um, at, a, at a discounted price. I, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't know what the price is right now, but it is, it is you will be able to get both books um, at a discounted price. Um, I believe it might be you know, $15 off or something like that. So um, I, there's also a link for that, a, a companion guide link. Um, okay. So you can go to my website and also get um, get that link because I do have a store tab on my on my website. So you click on the store and you'll be able to get directly to the companion guide. As a matter of fact, all of them to both books and the companion guide. Okay. All right. So, <clears throat> excuse me. What I will do, uh, I see your companion special offer. Okay. So what I will do is put the link for the companion special. Okay. I'll put that in the uh, comments and then I'll put it up on the screen. So anybody who wants to take advantage of the special is $35 for both. Yes. Um, and so that's an awesome deal because the book, the uh, journal by itself is 25. Yes. And then uh, the book by itself is 15. So you actually got a good special by, um, you know, getting them both together and they do work together. Y'all. Yes, they do. So you don't want one without the other. You want to yes. get both because, you know, not just because the cover looks so good and I designed it. <laughs> just because they work together. And when we actually uh, work together and we coached uh, Coach Mavis, um, cause she worked with IBG, you know, that was something that we talked about, you yes. know, her marketing strategy to put them together cause they work hand in hand. Mm -hmm. So you really don't want to get one without the other y'all go ahead and get the special. <laughs> um, she did post a video on her page, all her, uh, shipment came in. Um, <laughs> yes, I'm finally. So about, yes. I'm so <laughs> glad about that. We have some issues on the backdrop. We ain't going to bash no business right now, but mm -hmm. we have some issues, but she got her copies. So yes. go ahead and hit up her website, get both copies, bless somebody with it. If you're yes. not a married couple or married, Find somebody to bless with it. I know it will change their life. Just from me working on it and putting it together, it was like, oh, yeah, I need this when I get married. Matter of fact, I still have my copy. It ain't right here in front of me. But I still have my copy, so I'm good to go because y'all know I'll be getting married soon, so I'm good to go. Oh, congratulations. Yes, uh, yes Congrats. thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So, all right, Coach Mavis, thank you so much for stopping by the Working Wednesdays broadcast. It has been a tremendous pleasure having you on with us. What mm -hmm. are some final words that you have for us tonight? Um, let me see. I, I have a couple of things that I do want to say. Um, I know there are people that that want to write books. And one thing that I would like to share with anybody that has a book in their belly, as they say, mm -hmm. um, you you don't don't ever stop moving towards giving birth to that book. Mm, that's good. It's it's like pregnancy. Yes. It's gonna be a long process. Yes. But you know, you're gonna find out you have strengths that you never even thought you yeah. had. Yeah. The point is to be patient with yourself mm. and soon soon enough you will be in a delivery room. Yeah. And you will birth a, a beautiful, healthy book that yes. you can share with the world. Yes. All right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so hey, do do you do your purpose? That's that's what I want to share with people. That's good. That's good. I'm glad you brought that in because we didn't get to that question, but I'm glad you brought that in because you're right. It can be a long, grueling process. Yes, it's challenging. It will show you, like you said, gifts you ain't even know you had. <laughs> yes, <laughs> so, absolutely. You know, and and I I shared this on an interview I actually had earlier today that when you don't write your book and when you don't put it out you're actually holding up some, you may be holding up somebody's life. Yeah. You know, it may be all the difference of if you reach five people and then all those five people reach another five people, that's 25 more people that's right. that you have reached on top of the five you reach that you would not have reached if you didn't have that book to put that's into right. their hands. So Absolutely. people don't realize the power of being an author. It is yes. a 
it's a power it, it's power because you get to leave something tangible with someone that even that lives beyond you you know yeah. your books will live beyond you so it's uh that's good advice good advice so y'all heard it here on the working wednesday's broadcast <laughs> thank you coach mavis for stopping by Thank God you. bless you and your business and everything that the Lord will put your hands to do. We just thank God for you obeying the call yeah. of God because some you. people don't obey when God tells them something. <laughs> they don't. That's right. That's right. <laughs> you know, so I'm grateful for your obedience and just doing what God has called you to do. So thank you so much for stopping by with us. Right. Okay, thank you too. You're welcome. Have a good night. You too. Thank you. Right. You're welcome. Bye right. bye. All right, y'all. Y'all heard it here. I got her website up on the screen. So go ahead and reach out to Coach, coach Mavis. Uh, get your sex coach set up. If that's what you need, order the books. Go ahead and take advantage of her offer to get both for the price of $35. It is a tremendous, awesome uh, uh, blessing. I know firsthand about the workbook because like she said, I work with her. We uh, rebranded her, re-strategized her. So it's going to impact you in a totally different way. So go ahead and get that, get the book, learn how to be the, you know, learn the secrets of a good wife. She shares some of that at the top of the hour, but go ahead and get the book, learn how to, you know, love your husband the way he wants to be loved. So, and express how you want to be loved. Don't forget that part. So God bless y'all. Thank you for joining me tonight. Again, I'm your host, Audra V. Heard. I'm the I am an author. I am a, the CEO of IBG Publications. You can reach us on the web at ibgpublications.com. Um, this is officially going to be the last night that we're going to be coming on live for a very, very long time. I don't know that I will be coming back live like this um, because we are transitioning to a podcast format. So follow me on social media on my personal page, Audra V. Heard. Everything across all platforms is IBG Publications. That's on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. So you actually be able to catch this particular interview on our YouTube channel. We've got all the interviews from all the authors we featured all year. So we have been back at this since about February. I've only had maybe two breaks, y'all, since I got started. So I'm ready for this rest. <laughs> um, you know, I thought about the fact that I really had not taken any time off from doing the show. I thought about some of those famous shows, how they take the summer off. And I was like, I didn't take no summer off. <laughs> you know, so this is going to be the last night that I'll be live like this. Um, we maybe do some watch parties in the future. Um, but we are definitely going to a podcast format. I am contemplating what platforms it will be on. Um, most likely, I'm going to create a website where you can just click the link and listen. Um, and then, of course, everything will always be on our YouTube channel. And I'm considering some apps like iTunes and things of that nature, Apple Podcasts, rather. Um, so this is going to be the last night, y'all. Y'all know that coming in the fall, and this is off of IBG, but I will be launching the Ambassadors Institute of Divinity. Um, that is my online biblical school. It will launch in October. So the classes that will roll out for that are going to be our prophecy related classes. There are four classes in that particular uh, level of prophecy. So it's prophecy level one which includes an introduction to prophecy, dreams and visions, the seer and the scribe. So those are the four classes that are included in that prophecy level one. Um, I'll also be rolling out the God's ambassadors curriculum, which is for leaders and ministers and those who are called to the fivefold ministry. So if you are looking for training instruction to learn how to uh, master the office and the craft and the gifts that God has given you, that class is for you. And then we also will be launching some of our general biblical studies, which includes leadership one on one personal life support. Um, spiritual gifts, uh, spiritual warfare, and deliverance. So these are some things that are going to be taught in the Ambassadors Institute. But particularly in the fall, we'll only be rolling out some basic courses. I posted the flyer earlier, included the basic ones that will roll out in the fall. And then at the top of the year for our winter quarter, we'll be rolling out more. All right. So God bless y'all. Registration is free. Uh, go register. If you haven't registered, it's no cost to register. But when you're ready to get class started, 
you've got to go ahead and pay for your courses online on the platform. And I'll be more detailed later about how that's going to work and how classes are going to start. Um, because I will be teaching some of those classes and then some of the classes will be self-paced. So if you're not a person who cannot work on your own, but you prefer an instructor, then those are the kind of classes that you'll want to take. Um, but they are all online at this present time. So thank you so much for listening in this evening. Again, we are IBG Publications. Uh, reach us on the web, ibgpublications.com, all social media platforms. God bless y'all. Thank you so much for those who have tuned in every week with me. Even if you didn't catch me live, you caught the replay. So please put hashtag replay if you listen to the replay. Um, but I appreciate those who have supported the Working Wednesdays broadcast. We are not shutting down. We're just transitioning. Um, and I think it's going to work better for my personal schedule and the people who I've wanted to bring on, but we're not available on Wednesday evening. So I think it's going to work out good for those who are going to be coming on the show in the future. And then we will still fe feature uh, some of our previous interviews um, that did not make it either on the platform and maybe they're in audio format. So God bless y'all. Thank you so much for sticking it out with us at the Working Wednesdays broadcast. And go ahead and get registered for those courses for the Ambassadors Institute. I promise you everything we offer here will help to change your life and put you on the track that God has ordained for you to be on. So I, I am Audra V. Heard. Um, some people know me as Apostle Heard. That is my ministry office. So I am an ordained apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ. So I, um, I admonish you to become who God called you to be. And Coach Mavis said it so good, you know, birth that baby, birth that thing God has given you, whether it's a book, a business, a ministry, there's no excuse. You can go learn how to do anything on what y'all YouTube University, <laughs> y'all know, I tell you, you can learn anything you want to learn on YouTube. So God bless y'all. Thank you for coming out tonight or thank you for listening tonight. And um, stay tuned. We'll see you next time you follow that podcast. God bless y'all.